Well, I think I only want to make a, a few uh, brief points because these were really uh, rich um, pre presentations, but I, you know, I can't read my own notes, so I have to type them. Uh, I, I think what I took away from the first presentation, which is really exciting, is you know how much resilient, how many resilient elements you crammed into such a tiny thing with like with no money. So I, I think that really speaks to how physical form matters, but it isn't uh, a be all and an end all. I mean, architects do tend to uh, see disaster as an opportunity to start designing things and sending them in to whomever um, is there. But I, I, I'm, these presentations made me think that that's something we should think very, very, this sort of what I call the freelance um, kind of recovery, rebuilding, is something we need to, I think, very think very closely about it. What I'm very curious about your project, since it seems like you've been able to do a lot since Sandy, is did the community coalesce around this thing as something that everybody shared and so it had to happen really quickly and it had to come back? Or was just the sheer task of doing it, did it unite people? And I think, you know, that is again, uh, these, these points that unite people, I think are extraordinarily um, critical and we lose a little bit track of them. I've been following really since Katrina uh, and thanks to Architecture for Humanity, long-term recovery groups, which I think are enormously um, important. Some of them spring up naturally, dozens did on Staten Island, some actually coming right out of 9-11 um, support groups. And some are kind of more sanctioned groups that already existed, neighborhood associations. Um, I think this like surfers group on the Rockaways turned out to be really important, or so um, some charity that gave them the money told me. Uh, but let me move through quickly some other uh, elements. Um, one thing that concerned me about Staten Island Imagines, I will say, is that it seemed to operate very close in time, perhaps at the same time, as the city's SIRR process, which had a very similar workshop form. So it is really not fair to say that nothing else happened, nothing else engaged in the community. Now, it might be fair to say that the SIRR process was not good enough, and therefore SI Imagines had to come in. And so this, again, I think is worthy of discussion uh, across the day. Uh, some other aspects of it were, um, you know, I think, again, this is the freelancing problem. How do you get people to pay attention to what you've done in SI um, Imagines? Because I looked at very quickly those slides ahead of time, and they seem to embody a lot of great wisdom, some of which was also developed at SIRR. And, but then, you know, now your problem is how to get people to pay attention. And, and everyone's very busy and everyone's very confused and New York Rising is going on at the same time. Uh, presumably the mayor will do something with the SIRR, our new mayor. Uh, and, and I thought that they're very wise. And also after a while communities, this really happened in New Orleans, communities get tired of being consulted when they don't feel like things are moving forward. So obviously there's a very powerful role, I think in architects and all the people who really want to help in saying, okay, how, now a lot of, there's a big menu of possibilities for communities. How do we help them get them happen? Because all the things that are happening with, um, you know, the, uh, New York Rising program are gonna happen when people are trying to assemble money to do shoreline protections or install you know, beautiful uh, flood controlling marshes, et cetera. Uh, the, um, I won't even get into the Good Samaritan thing. It's so appalling that we, it is even a problem. Uh, now, one of the things that came up is how slow New York Rising has been and how maybe poorly, you know, implemented it is. I'm beginning to think after watching, you know, many problems with the road home in uh, Louisiana, and they had a slow pro uh, program in Mississippi, that to some extent this is a not entirely fixable problem, and it's actually should maybe make us rethink some of the way we're approaching these. Because the problem to me is if you're a homeowner, you can't really, really, really know what to do until you know what kind of protection your community might have. I saw in the SI Imagines the sort of identifying no build areas. But then what happens? One of my other areas of research is managed retreat. Managed retreat is very, very, very difficult to make happen. 
and I have my own ideas about how to make it better, but it's, not, it's never going to be easy. And so you say, well, you need to raise your house, uh, and the city or the New York Rising is saying, okay, we're going to get some, and the Army Corps uh, is going to say, we're going to get you some protections. But does that mean I have, don't have to raise my house up as much? Do I take some other steps? Is actually the steps going to sacrifice my block um, for another? Uh, there, in fact, was um, uh, that even came up in uh, one of the presentations talked about raising the streets without thinking about the bathtub problem that that would create. That bathtub problem actually happened in Coney Island precisely because what the individual homeowner could do was not coordinated with what the city or you know the community at large decides to do. And so I think you cannot um, go ahead without juggling these acts, which may, you know again implies more delay for the individual homeowner, which is tr truly deeply tragic. But we we have to get real realistic about this. And I think I oh, will stop right there because I think you all want lunch. <laughs> Thank you, James, for those insightful observations. I guess I'll ask uh, any of the presenters, do you want to just take a, a minute or two to respond to some of James's questions, or do we want to talk about this over lunch? Tim, would you like to? Okay. I think there are great comments about Staten Island Imagines, and, and you hit the nail on the head. Just to give you a little uh, chronology, uh, Staten Island Imagines program completed all of its workshops before the public ever heard of New York Rising. And in fact, New York Rising probably had its first uh, public workshop about six months after all of our workshops were done. Uh, the SIRR was uh, a program that was underway when we were running our workshops. Uh, and I participated in three uh, outreach events that SIRR had on Staten Island. and. Um, uh, it was moderately well attended, uh, but there, I did not recognize any people from the neighborhoods that were affected. In essence, it was people who were invited from Staten Island. So it was a few civic organization heads, and it was the Chamber of Commerce, and it was uh, a few cultural uh, organization heads. and. Uh, Believe me, I'm not being critical of those programs because a tremendous amount came out of those programs. But, but what we were doing was very, very much different from what was available at the time. So uh, I think that we could stand by that. Um, a New York Rising program uh, actually reached out to us and uh, we gave them a presentation uh, of our findings. Um, we also had a meeting with uh, the folks running uh, a portion of the Build It Back program when they were in the uh, process of, of uh, initiating that program for Staten Island in particular, not citywide. They were interested in Staten Island. So I think the program really went a long way into advising people and really getting response from people before they had that burnout. And that burnout is a very, very real thing, and I'm glad you mentioned it. Um, so so that, that was the value of it for me. And, uh, and you're right about Good Sam. It's just uh, so horrendous. Can't even talk about it any further. OK, thank you. Thanks, Ray. OK, thank you, Tim. Um, any other comments from Brooklyn or Long Island? OK. Just real, real briefly, I think that the most important comment that you made in relationship to our presentations regarding the project is that the, the project was one of the first projects to actually be reconstructed and rebuilt. And it was such a large scale um, rebuilding effort that it was really great for the community to see something being done. Um, and I do believe that we are 17 months down the line and there's very little actual physical reality of transformation of our neighborhoods, even though there's a lot of design and thinking and planning and drawings very little has actually been constructed. So to be able to sort of have a three and a half acre farm that within eight months of the storm was already sort of underway was something for the neighborhood to really sort of be able to physically see and say, okay, maybe something actually will happen in our neighborhood. Um, 
With the governor's announcement of the $200 million coastal resiliency measure to happen in Red Hook, um, I have clients that are also asking me, well, do I rebuild now? There's, and this is totally aside, but I do agree that there is a um, problem in terms of the steps of how things are happening. Um, and I find that a lot of residential houses are sort of very confused now because they don't really know what to expect or what to rebuild back to given the fact that there are commitments for other larger scale um, projects. So I would, you know, ideally like to see a better uh, organization and sort of um, a road map, shall we say, um, that sort of is, a, is provided through the various different organizations and agencies. Um, and the farm was sort of one example of sort of where they just sort of bit the bullet and did it, um, and we'll see what happens, but thank you. Okay, thank you, Gita. Martin, Tom, did you have uh, one comment? I'll be quick. I, uh, I know it's almost lunch, but um, I just, if anybody is practicing in a coastal community, um, uh, you're probably aware that New York Rising is closing its program on April 11th. I don't know if they're going to renew it again, but uh, there is word they're going to renew it. But they're officially closing the program on April 11th. Um, I walked through my community the other day and basically knocked on a lot of homes and uh, spoke with at least six people on my block didn't know that New York Rising was paying to lift their home and didn't know the program was closing. I, I don't know if they don't read the paper or uh, I don't know, but if anybody's practicing in a community, try to make people aware, try to find a way to get the, uh, the word out that the program is closing. Thank you. <laughs>